this is Robert with Northwest Oregon Fishing Channel and today we're taking you up to Clear Lake, Oregon to go fishing with my friend Josh and his son Aiden. Now the video turned out great but the sound not so much so today I'm going to voice over and go along with it. So here you go and let's get right to the action. Let's get a bite on one of these poles. Now the white pole and the blue pole are in the back center and the white pole is really easy to see so if you watch it do that little tip there that's a fish hitting on it. Here we go watch that pole. There it is. Boom another fish. Here you get a double where Josh hits a pole, he has a fish on his pole, and then he I turn around, and every time I turn around or do something, there goes my pole. And boom. That pole jump there. This fish is jumping around a lot. They're moving a lot. That's a lot of times that's a sign of a stalker. A lot of those stalker fish will jump up and down where the native fish or the fish that have been in there for a long time will kind of go downward and kind of hide a little bit more from you. But he comes right to the top and just starts jumping around. It's a little bit hard to see when we bring him up here, but this is a really nice shiny fish. That nice silvery color. That's how you know that it's a fresh fish and it hasn't been in very long. If you just cooperate, hold still for the photograph. Now we're going to release this one. He isn't hurt. Now you see here, we're turning the boat around. And what I like to do is I like to reel all the flashers up to where they're just sitting in the water so that way nothing can get really tangled up. But we can see everything and they won't wrap around the lines or anything like that. As soon as the boat gets turned around completely, I'll punch the boat up just a little bit faster than normal, like two miles per hour or so. And then that way we can let the lines out to the normal, which is 25 poles when we start or 20 feet approximately. Once we get the lines out to that distance, then what I'll do is I'll slow the boat back down to the normal operating speed which is approximately one mile per hour. And then if we need to make any final adjustments to the pole, like normally we would give an extra five poles or so to the center poles. It's hard to see the outside ones, but we're fishing with four. We moved them back a little bit so you can see that outside one there a little bit better. Aiden's fish is jumping around a lot, which again is usually a good sign of a stock fish or fresh stock, excuse me, most of the, all these fish are stock fish. Look at that one. He has a little bit of color in him. You see the bottom, of course, is white, but... Oh, and look at that grass on the lure. That's a really good sign that we've been hitting the bottom. You don't want to do that. You hit the bottom, and then what happens is you need to take that stuff off right away. Aiden's letting out five more pulls on both of those pulls. Now, 
basically five poles translates into somewhere around seven feet of line. Um, and we usually just go with the, you know, with the poles method and we don't even keep track of the feet. Look at that action on that white pole. Look at that nice tap. Just a little slow and then the wind is going to hit us and it's going to get a little too fast. So it's just kind of a fine line to know when the poles are operating perfectly. The white one is the softest one and you want to put the softer poles down the middle and the stiffer poles to the outside because they'll hold the action a little bit better. go. Oh, the blue pole is going nuts. Nice action there too. Good pull. So when they hit that hard, you know that they're hooking themselves. You'd like to see that two or three good times. A lot of people will put on what they call a snubber and I like to put the snubber directly behind the spinner in between the bait presentation, whether it's a uh, the Dick Knight fish flat or uh, the Dick Knights or the um, Triple Teasers or just a worm. That way the spinner doesn't pull on it, but when the fish hits it, he pulls on it and it has like a rubber band effect. It gives a little snap. I have used a couple of snap swivels before and a big rubber band. will do the exact same thing and save you a little bit of money. Don't put just the rubber band on though. Remember to use some braid or some uh, heavy mono and tie that on to where the um, rubber band is just a, a little bit tighter than that and it's a little loose. Nathan's got one on that outside pole there. Now, when you're reeling in the outside pole, it's really important to stay completely sideways off the boat. So it's hard for me to get that camera angle on that pole. So I'm going to move it over a little bit so you can see how far out sideways I want him to stay. And you always also can put the longer poles out there, which will help with that too. But by doing that, those poles end up being the easiest ones to get in without tangling up the other poles because you can keep those fish and let them go clear out to the outside. And you see how I just come right underneath the fish at an angle right in front of him and he just swims right in. And the fish is great color with those red fins. He's been in the water for a while. Oh, watch this hit. Look at that go. And look at that pull on that. It hit so hard, we thought it was the bottom. I couldn't move the camera while I was reeling in this fish, so we cut it to this picture after we got it in the boat. That's a huge fish. It's bigger than the net. This is a 19-inch fish, and at the end of the video, you'll see the fish laid out on the uh, piece of plywood that I used to clean the fish on. And this is the biggest one of the day. <clears throat> Look at that fish. That thing is beautiful. This is what they've been putting in the lake. And there's Aiden with another fish. A 
I really like putting that white pole on the camera because you can really see it really well. If you look underneath this pole, you'll see there's some flashers in the water. On a slow day, I like to clip some flashers and put them on the back of my bags. Obviously, you cannot put a hook on them, but there's nothing wrong with throwing a flasher down in the water so you get a little bit of extra action. Those fish won't just want to come school with them. And sometimes when you do that, you need to make sure that you're close enough to get the fish to actually bite and not just hang out with your flashers. Now this year, they've in the last couple of years, they've started stocking bigger and bigger fish. This year they dumped a bunch of trophy fish in a bunch of different lakes, which are large ones like the one that I caught in the last scene. Is that fish jumping around? It's crazy. Look at that weight. It's basically an inline weight with a rubber retainer. It's shaped kind of like an oval with a slot down the middle. You take the line and put it in and twist both ends, and then the line just goes behind it, and the rubber just holds it on the line. It doesn't hold it from moving forward and up, but when you're trolling, it just slides down the line and rests against the flasher. And you can put as many of them on as you like. I usually just use one size and I get multiples of them so that way I'm not digging through looking for a big one. Look at that fish just keep coming back until he gets it. He's decided he wants it and he'll hit it until he gets it. Up. You gotta remember that when a fish is hitting, leave your pole down until he's actually hitting. Just like a salmon taking line. Sometimes you just want to loosen up your drag a little bit and let them hit a couple of times in to where they kind of start to pull just a little bit. They're kind of small, so they're not going to rip off a lot of line. And like I said, I can't say enough that you just need to leave your pole in the holder until that until they start taking, you know, until they really start hitting it hard. Because if they're not hooked, they're not hooked. They'll come up to it and grab it a bunch of times, and you're not going to hook them. I could show you scene after scene of these fish just coming up and stalking the bait. They just keep coming up and taking a little drive up on it. And I've seen the same thing with the salmon video. That same fish has come back three times, there's four times. I don't know why he didn't bite it, it looked really good to me. I would have bit it. And look, it's the fifth time, he's still there, he has not given up. I thought this was really cool, and so I really had to put it in there. The flashers simulate a school of fish. So when you have two or three sets of flashers together, those fish think it's a school, and they just all kind of hang out together. And we ended up catching this fish, on this school of fish on the camera, and it's just really cool. Too bad they weren't biters, but we did get video of the whole bunch of them. And, you know, if this is what you see. Just think of all the other ones that you didn't see on the camera that are probably sitting right there next to them. I'm going to put a link in the notes for a uh, blog post that I did several years ago about Clear Lake. Just remember that there's a few different ways to fish, a few different locations to fish when you're in a boat. From the shore, you really just want to fish either a point or the dam. Uh, early in the morning, you can power bait in a lot of places on the lake, but you really have to get off the shore. That is a nice catch, and that big fish is right there on the top. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe.